this is a video about um, how to create the R file or Rust file that's needed in order to run SW4 and then uh, a bunch of works that I have done to uh, since uh, since the last time I recorded the uh, video um, so the R file is called the raster file so it's a it's a file that's that that combines the to topography data and together with the velocity model the seismic velocity model so so in order to create this particular file uh, it's gonna take some effort to actually create this file correctly with the right format and so on so um, and then uh, the, the so the R file was created by using this man of script called R file underscore Jing and uh, uh, it does a lot of different uh, uh, different tasks basically it's uh, um, um, So, so the R file that I have created for the for the California sort of region is like ca dot R. It's called ca dot R, and then and then this file is going to be read by SW4 uh, as one of those probably one of those uh, one of the most important uh, input files, and and um, um, so in this video I'll talk about how to create this R file, how to actually how to actually validate the R file, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and then also some some of the things that I I forgot to do, some of the corrections that I have to make um, when when I actually did the when I actually compiled the SW4. So so one of the mistakes I made uh, in the first video, which is uh, compiling SW4, is that I forgot to um, let me see. So let me let me make this correct. Let me record the correction that I made first. So, so this is inside of the SW4 source directory uh, for for 2.0, right? And then I've got a config directory, right? So, so so if I if I look at the configs, make the inc file. Uh, last time I didn't actually have like a, this. I didn't have this line, and then I didn't have this line. So these two lines were added today to uh, to actually make some correction uh, to to actually uh, so these two these top two lines right so by default uh, SW4 is not gonna automatically link with PRG.4 the the mapping library unless you specify PRG equals to yes in the configuration file make it an INC file right so 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 in the first video I forgot to add this line, right? Um, and then another thing that we uh, another line the the second line that I have to add is this line. I have to tell uh, SW4 where that particular project uh, mapping library is actually located. It's actually located in here, right? So it doesn't really need the source directory. It just needs the the the, the build directory, right? So underneath the build directory, I've got they include header files and also the library files. So, so, so if I take a look at the, the content of this particular directory, so it's got probably the most important thing is include and lib, these two files, right? And then inside the include, uh, that's the that's probably the most important header, prog underscore api dot h, right? So, so. So the make .inc file needs to add these two files in order, these two lines in order to actually use prog.4, this mapping library. But otherwise, it's not gonna link with the prog.4 libraries. And then I need to recompile everything. So so um, after I added these two lines to make the .inc, I need to recompile everything, right? And then first do a make clean, right? And then do a make all, right? And then uh, I'm gonna get, uh, I'll get a, uh, I'll get a new 
uh, I'll get a new executable SW4 and uh, then it will be able to uh, use PRG.4 as its uh, mapping library right it's to um, do, do the map projections and stuff right so so that's one of the things that's kind of important to remember right remember to do it um, it's it's actually talked about in the installation in the installation documentation of SW4, but uh, I I didn't actually read through it carefully, so so that's one of the things I forgot to do. Um, and then the next thing that I have to do is to uh, is to actually uh, create the R file, basically, right? So, how do we actually create the R file? So, um, so let's let's look at the, this particular script R file gene dot m, right? So this, here it's just adding a bunch of uh, uh, at the path to a bunch of scripts, basically. So this is uh, loading the loading the station file all the seismic stations and then that's the forts in California and then that's the that's the box inside of which we're gonna run our simulations this these these lines are just for sort of defining the dimension of the velocity model basically it's a, um, so the, so the velocity model has like a this many grid points in the X direction this many points in the Y direction and then this many points in the Z direction and then this thing is just the, the total number of grid points, and then I need to find the the model file, right? The velocity model file, which is this one. It's a binary file, and then I'll just read the file, and then close the file, and then the content of this file goes into temp, and then the p velocity model, s velocity model, and density are just the portions of temp, right? So I just uh, take out a portion of the temp and then reshape it into x, n, y, and n, z. One of the things I have to, and then after I have moved all the data into like these three uh, matrices, three-dimensional matrices, I can just clear temp, right? Because temp is useless now. One of the things I have to sort of uh, remember is that I need to change the coordinate system. The the velocity model I I'm reading into MATLAB here is created by using AWP. So and it actually uses a different kind of coordinate system from SW4. So SW4 uses right hand system with the Z coordinates pointing into the Earth, right? But AWP has a slightly different uh, coordinate system. So um, it's still right hand system, except right hand coordinate system, except that the Z coordinates actually points towards the surface. So the origin actually lies inside the Earth. Right, SW4, SW4 origin lies at uh, the mean sea level, right? So, so but for AWP, it actually the, the origin actually lies um, at uh, very large depths, depending upon the simulation box, right? But, and the Z coordinate actually points towards the surface, right? So, and then uh, so X and Y direction and Z direction all has to be kind of rearranged somehow, so. In order to actually convert this velocity model into the coordinates of SW4, so what I was doing here in this particular cell of uh, MATLAB cell is just uh, doing that coordinate transform, change the coordinates. So, so you can sort of see I'm reversing the z coordinates, right? And then I also did a transpose, right? So this transposing the in the x y direction, and then after the transpose, I I have to sort of do a flip up and down, so in order to actually get the thing into, uh, get the velocity model into the right shape, uh, right, right, right coordinate system, right. And then, uh, and then that's pretty much it, right. Um, and then here uh, in, inside of this particular cell, I'm making some plots. I'm making some plots of the of the of the both the topography and also the um, both topography and also the the velocity model. So I was making two figures. One figure, this one is for topography, I think, right? Because it's using surf m lat long e l e v. That's plotting the topography. And then this one is actually plotting the 
vs the s velocity model uh, at at uh, 10 kilometer depths 10 kilometer depths right um yeah i think uh, uh so 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 the topography uh in the previous video, I talked about how to create the topography, right? That's the script that I used for creating the topography. I have to generate the map projection first and then uh, go through a bunch of um, steps in order to actually get the topography, right? And then after I finished generating the topography, I just uh, saved it into this .mat file. That's a binary map file um, together with a bunch of other things, right? And then in this rfile.ching, I'm simply just loading that .mat file so 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 the elevation data is automatically loaded inside of this r file gene right, so i was making this kind of making making two plots so the two plots is going to look like this kind of thing um for some reason it's kind of slow right so that's uh so that's topography with all the seismic stations um and then the second figure is the VS, the S velocity at 10 kilometer depths. Um, it looks like that. The background shading, the grayscale shading is actually topography. So you can still see the highs and the lows of the topography as some kind of shading, right? And then the color, red and blue color, actually indicates Vs. Uh, that's a shear velocity at 10 km depth. So here you can sort of see Sierra Nevada at 10 km depth, depth right? That's probably the bathless. So it's got a high velocity. And then at 10 km depth, you still see Great Valley Basin to the south part, the southern San Joaquin Basin, right? So, and then at 10 km depth, you see lots of uh, low velocity close to the close to the Cascadia. Right, so this velocity model was actually constructed. Um, how do I say? Um, it's a, a constructed through inversion. It's not really so. So so the start so. So the so the so the color that you see here is actually coming out of full 3D uh, waveform waveform tomography using purely just the ambient noise data, not purely ambient noise data, but but um, it's kind of a long process. So so this velocity model was constructed by basically just a uh, uh, how do I say? So the history is like this. So Ari, Ari Lee and I uh, worked out the velocity model for the Southern California portion uh, during the PhD work of Ari. Ari is now a, a assistant professor at the National Changkong University in, in in Taiwan. So, so his PhD work was doing this uh, full 3D tomography for Southern California. Um, and uh, that that tomography basically covers the entire Southern California. So if you see where my cursor is, that's pretty much just the, that's pretty much the region that's covered by in Henry's PhD work, right? Uh, and that model is called a CVM S4.26, right? So that inversion started with the Southern California Earthquake Center Community Velocity Model version 4.0. And then we did like 26 iterations on it, right? And then the final model we obtained and published was uh, CVM 4.26, right? That was uh, that was the, that was the model that goes into the starting model for this larger model, right? And then the starting model for the Northern California, I have another box that's about that's surrounding this uh, this region, right? And that Northern California box, I did only I myself did like five iterations on it, right? And the starting model for that box uh, was based upon the USGS Bay Area model. The USGS Bay Area model actually has two uh, boxes: one smaller box with higher resolution, and then a larger box with uh, kind of a lower resolution. 
so I was using the larger box as sort of the starting model, right? And then uh, I did like five iterations inside of it, right? And then those two boxes basically covers the entire California. And then everything else of, that's not covered by the, those two boxes are actually taken from retomography done by uh, Guo Qingling. She's a professor at the University of Miami, and uh, she's a uh, She's a, she's a, she, she did some ray tomography, ray, ray travel time tomography for the entire California, and then, um, and then her model actually covers pretty much the entire California. So, so for regions that's not covered by those two boxes are taken from the velocity model was taken actually from 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 Guo Qing's ray theoretic model, and then. And then you can sort of see lots of the regions that's sort of outside of California. Lots of uh, most of uh, Nevada and most of um, uh, the, the, those those other states are also covered, right? Those the starting model for those states that's outside of California were actually taken from a global crust model called a Litho. Um, so I actually have it. Uh, it's called. Where is it? Uh, did I? Where did I put it? It's a global crust model, right? Uh, maybe it's in work. Yeah, yeah. It's called Litho. It's a one degree ma one degree resolution. Right, and then that was the that was the, so 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 there's a reference for that, right? Um, so 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 the starting model for this entire box was basically a concatenation of CVMS 4.26, and then the Northern California model that I did like five iterations things out of it, and then Guo Qing's model covering the entire California and then this model this model for everywhere that's not covered by the rest uh, the, uh, all the, uh, the all the other models basically so so that's um, that's VS at 10 km right so that's like the uh, and then and then um, and then after I got the after I got the starting model I did like four iterations I did four iterations on that Collection of starting models, right? Using just purely ambient noise data, I did like four iterations on it, and then the model that you are seeing on screen right now is actually the result of after like four iterations using purely ambient noise Green's functions. Um, right, and then my 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 purpose is to actually keep iterating, but using a different forward simulation code, right? And uh, those four iterations was uh, carried out using AWP. But now I would like to actually switch to SW4, and then keep iterating, and then include not just the ambient noise data, but also earthquake data for the entire box, and see what I'm gonna see, and find out what I'm gonna. Uh, what I'm gonna discover, right? So, um, so th so that was the that was th that was the model that I'm gonna use as uh, that was the velocity model that I'm gonna use as the starting model for 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 the SW4 simulations, and then this matter of seal is just for. Plotting, right? Plotting the corners of the box, and then doing some geodetic calculations, that kind of thing. I think I talked about it last time, last time, right? And then, uh, so the velocity model and topography are all loaded into MATLAB now, and now I have to sort of reorganize it, reorganize them into some kind of format that can be written into that R file, right? So. Um, EOEV was actually created by using that EOEV gene 
script and then I, I'm, here I'm taking the size of it and so so the first dimension is actually y the second dimension is actually x right so so i direction is associated with njb that's the total number of grid points in the y coordinates that's the total number of grid points in the x coordinate and ib so hmm. and then I have to sort of uh, but elevation is like two-dimensional matrix. I have to sort of reorganize it into like a one-dimensional array, and that one-dimensional array is called OARR, output array, and then it's just a one-dimensional. I'm allocating the memory for it, and then initializing everything to zero, and then here I'm just a kind of a doing a nested loop. The thing that I have to remember is that the x is the x direction is the slow direction, and the y direction is the fast direction. So so so. I, the loop over I is outside, and the loop over J is kind of inside. And then one of the things that the SW4 requires us to sort of specify is something that's called Z max. So, so, so its user menu actually gave a, actually gave a, um, explicit formula for computing Z max. Z max is basically the bottom of the the bottom depth of the curvilinear uh, grid. So so SW4 is gonna have like a uh, so the grid that I'm actually specifying is has two components. Uh, the top component is the curvilinear uh, curvilinear component that extends from topography to this Z max. And in order to actually create a stable simulations, uh, they gave this particular formula. Z max must be larger than or equal to tor max plus three times tor max subtract tor min. Tor, tor max is like the highest elevation, and then tor min is like the lowest elevation. Um, oh no, I got it wrong. Tor max uh, tor min is like the highest elevation, right? So, so z is supposed to be positive downward, right? So, and then the origin of z is at mean sea level, right? So, z equals to zero corresponds to mean sea level (MSL), right? And then everything that's above the mean sea level, that's going to be negative. So, so, so Sierra Nevada, this very high hill, is going to have negative to negative toll, right? So, so. Um, uh, a very negative toll, and then those are kind of a regions that's uh, below mean sea level is going to have a positive uh, z, positive z, right? Uh, and then what I have to do is to actually compute z max, right? So I'm going to take, um, so what exactly is this thing? Uh, so OAR is not really a uh, tau. OAR is actually elevation, right? So what I'm using is actually this thing. Is probably this uh, this uh, this formula. So that's uh, that. Uh, so so it's not uh, exactly z. It's uh, e basically. E is elevation, right? I'm using elevation. To actually, I'm using this particular formula. So E min corresponding to the mean of OAR, right? E is the elevation. Elevation is just a minus two. So 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 I'm using this particular formula. And then subtract three times E max. That's max OAR subtract mean OAR, right? And then uh, I have to put a minus sign. So Z max equals to minus E grid, right? So that's the minus sign here. And then Z max. Is going to be displayed to the to the to the command window, and then the value that I computed for my box is like a about 32.7 kilometers or something, right? Uh, so so when I did the SW4 simulation, the Z max I gave to it is just um, about 33 kilometers or something, right? And then I have to specify the horizontal and vertical grid spacing. This grid spacing is not for simulation. This grid spacing is for specifying the seismic velocity model. So the seismic velocity model is defined on this kind of grid spacing, right? So it's like a, the unit is in meters. 
so it's 1000 meters and then h h that's the horizontal grid spacing is 1000 meter and the h v that's the vertical grid spacing equals to the horizontal grid spacing so here i'm actually using some kind of uniform grid to specify the velocity model and the resolution is like one one kilometer right and then um So, so the velocity model is specified on a kind of a cubical grid, and then the cubical grid actually starts from z z zero. So z zero has to be the negative, the maximum elevation. Take a minus sign, right? Minus maximum elevation, right? So uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be the the top. Of our velocity model cubic cube cube velocity model cube, right? So so this is like a way above lots of regions. That's kind of a, have a um, um, that's a, so so this is the maximum elevation with a minus sign, right? But that's going to be the starting z value. That's going to be starting value. So, so lots of the grid points in this velocity cube is going to be above local topography, right? And then, uh, and then file format. Let me look at R file, right? R file. Um, Right, that's called the base Z level for block B. Right, base Z level for block B. Um, so that's Z zero. Right. Um, so so if a grid point is actually above. Um, Local topography. Then what's going to happen, right? The density and the p velocity and the s velocity is going to be specified as minus nine nine nine, right? Um, so that's what I did here. So I've got like three components because uh, we have both p s velocity and uh, density, right? So that's three three numbers per grid point. Uh, n i equals to n i b, n j equals to n j b, n k equals to ninety six because uh, the velocity model that I'm using actually has extends to like 96 kilometers uh, below the surface. So, so the, in the vertical direction, I only have like 96 grid points um, because the vertical grid spacing is 1 km. So, and then I'm creating a one-dimensional array called OAR1. That's gonna have this many numbers in it, and then. Outside equal to zero is just a counter of how many grid points is actually above uh, local topography, and then I do this loop. Again, the loop is like a so x is the slowest direction, y is the slightly faster, the middle direction, and then k the vertical direction is like the fastest. Um, so here I'm actually computing x coordinate, y coordinate by using the grid spacing multiply with the loop index, subtract one, right? That's for x and y, but for z, I have to add z zero, right? Z zero is the base z, right? Um, and then that's gonna give me the the actual depth below the base z, right? The, so the so actual actual z coordinates, and then I convert it into Index ix iy. This part is kind of easy, but elevation el has to be the, the minus el ev. So 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 that's computing the, the 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 z coordinates of the local elevation. And then if z is smaller than the local elevation, which means that the, the grid point that I'm actually specifying is actually outside of the simulation box. It's above local topography. If that's the case, I increase the counter for outside outside counter, and then specify uh, density p and s velocity to minus 999, right? Otherwise, it's below topography. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the z value subtract the local elevation. That's going to give me the 
the, the z value below topography and then divide by hv that's the grid spacing right and then plus one that's that's going to give me iz the index of z and then i'm going to just go to the velocity model to retrieve the value based upon i y i based on upon the x y and z uh, coordinate system right um yeah and then that's it that's it uh, and then a few other things, right? A few other things. So, so I now I have like two one-dimensional arrays, OAR and OAR one. OAR stores the elevation, and then OAR one stores the velocity model. And then I have to sort of write the file, uh, write the two arrays into that dot, uh, R file. But it's got some header files, header information. Magic equals to one means uh, it's a little Indian, right? Precision equals to four which is a single precision floating point number. ATT specifies uh, attenuation. So if it's zero, I'm not considering attenuation. And then this string is actually used for projection. Uh, I compute the length of the string, and then the total number of blocks is like two, two blocks. And then that's that's specifying the values for, for some header information. And then the last cell is for writing out this particular file. So, so this part writes the header, right? So this let zero, long zero, is like a, uh, the origin of my velocity model cube, right? And then azimuth also, right? Um, the requirement is that the azimuth has to be so 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 the the, the R file basically specifies the, the the cube for the velocity model, right? But the grid spacing and also the grid for simulation. For actual wave propagation simulation, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the grid for defining the velocity model. It can be, it can have a smaller grid spacing, for example, right? But the requirement is that the, the azimuth, the azimuth for the for the velocity model for defining the velocity model cube must be identical to the azimuth of the mesh generated for for doing uh, wave propagation simulations, right? So, so these azimuths that's used here must be exactly the same as the elements that we're going to use for for simulation right so that's one of the points that uh, that's kind of emphasized in the user manual right the elements is 54.7 degrees right um, and then some other additional header right um, And then, uh, specifying the block dimensions, right? Block dimensions. Um. So I've got like two blocks, two blocks, right? So that's why you see like two different uh, two different block headers, right? So the first block is going to have this, the first block is for storing the topography, so so that's going to have its own uh, block header. It's called a topo block, right? And then the second one is for material properties, the velocity model, right? So it's got its own block. So I've got like two blocks in total, so the actual data is actually written here. And then after I finish writing the data, I, I close it, right? Um, yeah, I think that's um, that's everything about the R file. Right. So after I finish running this particular file, a uh, matter script, what I'm gonna get is um, is um, is this particular file. That's C L R. Right. It's about 2.3 gigabytes. It's not too big, considering the huge mesh. Right. It's um, it's a it's a relatively small file. And then, yeah, I, and that's the R file. That's probably the most important file. And then the next thing that I did was to actually try to uh, actually create a master input file for running SW4. And that master input file is called test.ing. This is just for testing. It's not really for really sim for actual simulations. And then and then the file actually looks like that. Um, file I/O. So, so 
this particular input file for this kind of master input file has lots of keywords. It's almost like its own programming language. Right. It's got lots of keywords. File I.O. is one of those keywords, and then grid is another keyword, topography, another keyword. So for every keyword, it's going to have lots of options behind it, right? that kind of thing. So, so file I.O. just uh, is a keyword for specifying what's going to be the path for storing the output files. Right? And then that's the, that's the path option. And then PFS means parallel file system. Equals to one means that I have a parallel file system, so multiple processes can actually write to the uh, to write write to the write to the disk simultaneously, that kind of thing. So I I'm not sure I'm using the right option. I probably should try uh, PFS equal to zero, right? Because um, it's not really a parallel file system. Verbals just uh, uh, means uh, the amount of text or the amount of information being printed. Uh, to the to the to the screen during the run, and then if you have a higher number, it means that it's going to print out more information. Uh, three is like the maximum, so two, so so zero is like minimum. So so if I do like two, it means that it's going to print lots of stuff. Print cycle equal to ten means that uh, because it's going to do lots of time loops, right? So it's going to every for for every tenth time loop, it's going to print out some additional information, right? And then the grid keyword specifies the simulation grid. It's not the it's not the velocity model grid, right? It's not the velocity model grid. It's the simulation grid. So the simulation grid has a, so so for the grid command, it's got like a, a few options. X equals to Y equals to those things are all just options name. And then it's key value pairs, right? So that's the key, and then that's the value. So so X means the the dimension of the simulation box in the X coordinate. That's like 950 thousand meters, right? So every unit is in meters. So, so, so that's the dimension of the simulation box. That's the dimension of the simulation box in the y direction, and then that's the dimension of the simulation box in the z direction. And the n x is another option, right? So, which means how many grid points are used in the x direction. Here, I'm just giving like 1,000 grid points. So, so, so the grid spacing for simulation is going to be computed. By dividing the x dimension with uh, by 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 the number of grid points in the x direction, right? So, so the grid spacing is like 950 meters basically, right? Uh, and that's just one of the ways for specifying the grid spacing and also the dimension of the simulation. So, so here lat equals to and long equal to is the origin of the coordinate system, right? For for the simulation, not the it cannot be confused about the lat and long for the so so that's the origin for 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 defining the velocity model, but here that's the origin for the simulation, right? Um, and then the only requirement is that the azimuth has to be the same as the velocity model. As the as must used in defining the velocity model. So if it's, this is 54.7 here, it has to be 54.7 here, right? And then all the rest of the stuff is just for sending it to 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 PRJ.4. All those all those parameters are for PRJ.4, right? The mapping library. So the projection type is Lambert uh, conformal conic, right? Long underscore p corresponding to long underscore zero. Right, so 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 long underscore p is going to be converted into long underscore zero and then sent to PRG dot four. Lat underscore p is going to be converted to lat underscore zero and then sent to PRG dot four. The problem that I had was uh, lat underscore one and lat underscore two. So SW four doesn't actually recognize these two options, but PRG dot four actually recognizes them. Right, so that's another issue that I had with SW4. So, so if I just specify these two parameters, SW4 is going to tell me that let underscore 1 and let underscore 2 are not recognized. It's going to give me a warning. It's not going to stop the simulation, but it's going to give me a warning message. Right, but in fact, PROJ.4 actually take those two parameters. Right. Uh, 
so so SW4 is gonna convert long underscore p into long underscore zero, let underscore p to let underscore zero, but it's gonna it's gonna tell me that these two parameters are not taken by are not accepted by PRG dot four. So what I did was that I changed the source code a little bit. Um, So what I did is that I changed the parse input file dot C. I changed this source file of SW4. So the changes I've made is listed in here, right? Um, so this 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 section of the code was added by me, right? So if 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 it sees let underscore one, then token plus equals to six means this number is actually the the number of characters of that key uh, of that option string or keyword string. Uh, uh, right. So one two three four five six. Right. One two three four five six. That's six characters. So so that's six here. Right. And then P L J zero is actually a C++ string for storing all those option key value pairs. So I just sent the token concatenated with this plus let underscore one to PROG zero. And then set this thing to true. For let two I do the same thing. Right. And then send the send the send the keyword uh, send the key, uh, key value pair to PROG zero. So PROG zero is like a string for storing all the options that's gonna be uh, Provided to PRJ.4. right? So that's pretty much the only change that I made. Um, and another thing, geographic projection of C, right? That's another source code of SW4. So if you look into PR, uh, this particular source code, um, it's going to take some some inputs, right? Uh, string projection that pro that proj dot zero this particular string is going to be used as input to this particular function to this particular constructor right and then this particular string is going to be used as input to pj underscore init underscore plus and this is the function provided by proj dot four right. So everything that's concatenated into PROG.0 is going to go into everything that's concatenated into, uh, into this particular string is going to is going to go into PR, uh, projections into this string and then this string is going to be used as input to this uh, initialization function of PROG.4 right So here I added three more lines to just print out the content of the projection a string. All right, so that's another file that I modified. It's a geographic projection of C. Right? And then after I made these two changes, um, the SW I have to recompile SW4, and then it's gonna get rid of the warning about let one and let two. Right, so so now now it's gonna take let one and let two as um, as inputs, and then that's the that's the that's the grid grid command, and then topography command it's gonna take uh, this option called input. So here input equals to R file means that the the topography is specified inside of an R file, and then Zmax Zmax that's the Zmax that I computed and displayed to the command window. Uh, where is that command? That's where is that thing? <laughs> right, that's this thing. Zmax is what 33 kilometer. 
order equals to 3. This is actually for smoothing the topography, basically. So SW4 is going to try to actually smooth the raw topography input by using some kind of a relaxation method. And then the smooth topography is going to be used to actually create the vertical, to, uh, to create the the uh, the the the, the curvilinear grid. And then the curvilinear grid is going to have uniform horizontal grid spacing. The, the uniform horizontal grid spacing is going to be the grid spacing determined here, right? That's like 950 meters. But the vertical grid spacing is going to be adapted to local topography. Right. So it's going to try to actually distribute. Uh, it's going to try to distribute the, the vertical interval. Try to distribute evenly according to some kind of third order polynomial. So, 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 so the topography is going to be. Uh, because of the topography, so so the vertical interval. From the topography to the max. Is going to be different for different uh, lateral locations. Um, so the vertical grid spacing is going to vary for different lateral locations, right? And then this order equals to three is just going to say that I'm going to use a cubic polynomial to actually try to uh, make the make the vertical grid spacing very smoothly. According to some sort of third uh, third order polynomial um, polynomial function, and then the file is just going to specify where the topography is going to be specified. The file in which the, the topography is specified, which is a C L R file that's created by this particular uh, MATLAB script, and then R file is basically specifying where the R file is actually located. So so the information here and the information here is kind of duplicate, but for some reason. Uh, it, it's um, it's specified this way. So R file, right, and then the file name, and then the directory, the path, the absolute path to that particular file. Time, how many, how long do I want the simulation to be? Steps. So I want to just do like a one time step because um, here I'm not really trying to do a realistic simulation. I'm just trying to um, create some kind of output file for me to actually validate if my simulation is correct or not. If if my input files have been specifi specified correct or, uh, correctly or not, and then source that's uh, that's a very simple source, right? It's a vertical force in the z direction, and then at this latitude and longitude, depth equal to zero means that this is a source at the location, at the surface of the local topography, and it's got some kind of pre pre specified or uh, sort of built in. Uh, time function, uh, and then receiver is some sort of arbitrary receiver, right? REC keyword specifies the receiver location, and I want the output to, to be in velocity. The file name is going to specify as S0 or something, and then sec format equals 0, but uh, USGS format equals to 1, so that's like a, a text file. And then the important thing that I want to check is actually some 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 images, some map view images. Which shows that choose the topography that's used by the simulation, right? So, so the image command is gonna allow me to actually create some output from the SW4 simulation. So the mode is gonna be topography. Z equals to zero means what? It means it means the surface. It's not the mean sea level here. It actually means the topography, right? Cycle equals to zero. File equals to test. So all the output file is gonna have a Prefix that's called a test, and then just the topography data itself is not enough because I also need to know the latitude and longitude of that particular topography grid, right? And then they are also at z equal to zero, right? So and then I also have to check two cross sections to to look at the, the s velocity model. The property that I'm going to look at is the vs basically, and then mo uh, and also also the grid at location x equals to 512 or something, right? Uh, but I'm not gonna sort of do these two checks today because um, the, I'll, 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 the the code will be stopped. I'll, I'll, I'll try to check that next time.
but I'll ch check the topography. The topography used in the simulation must be identical to the topography that's sort of specified in the in the, in the input in order for the uh, simulation to be correct, right? So so that's sort of the input file. That's the entire master input file. And then all I have to do is to actually run this particular run SW4 with this uh, particular input file. So what I did was MPI run dash n8. 8 is because I have 8 cores on this desktop. And then just to specify the path to the executable, SW4 executable. Uh, and then test.in. Right? That's the master input file. So if I press enter here, then it's going to start to run, and then it's going uh, it's going to finish executing and create some output files. So the output files are going to be stored underneath SW4 test. Right. So that's that's the three output files for checking the topography. Right. That's the latitude, that's the longitude, and then that's the topo data itself. Right. Now, after these three files are created, I can go back to MATLAB and then use this particular script to actually make a plot of those three sets of uh, three three files. So basically, here I'm actually reading those uh, those image files. So SW4 IMG, these are image files created by Mat uh, created by SW4. So so read image. This is actually a function that's provided by SW4. It's a matter of function provided by SW4. It comes with the SW4 source code. And it's stored underneath this particular directory. Those those functions, those matter functions are stored underneath this particular directory. Uh, so after I load those uh, image files into uh, into 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 memory, I can just uh, uh, make a plot of it. Right. So let me just run it really quick. So now it's um, it has finished creating the. So that's like this. That's the simulation, and that's the topography that's used inside of the simulation mesh. The background, right? So so if I compare it with Figure One, you can you can see that topography are identical, but the 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 box is slightly smaller, right? The box is slightly smaller. The coordinate, the 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 longitude latitude range is uh, uh, is identical for these two images, it, uh, but you can sort of see the the boundary shrinked a little bit. Right. That's actually one of the one of the things that I have to pay attention to about creating uh, cr about uh, SW4. Right. So the the it's it's uh, it's it's recommended that, that the the velocity model cube. Is slightly bigger than the simulation cube, right? So, so it shrinks a little bit, but it still has all the all the stations inside of it, and then, um, and it looks like it looks like uh, at least for the topography part, I my my input inside of the R file is actually correct, right? Um, Yeah, I think that's kind of long enough for for today. I'll I'll I'll, I'll continue to work on this thing and uh, and try to make another video next time uh, after after I sort of make more progress. Right. Uh, and uh, you might be able to actually see some of the differences in the color in the background color, right? Because uh, looks like uh, SW4 has done some smoothing on the. Topography. So the topography is not exactly the same, I think. Right. Maybe I should fix the color scale so I can see the the differences in topography uh, better. Right. To 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 make sure that uh, I I indeed got the got the right topography, and they are not sort of. Uh, they are not kind of. Uh, differ by, by, by the slightest amount. So I'm trying to actually do things as accurate as possible, but uh, sometimes I may just uh, have missed some of the 
important information in the user manual or uh, misunderstood some things in the user manual or something. But hopefully, I didn't actually make serious mistakes. Okay.